Okay? 10 minutes load management. This is the abbreviated course of load management. So I run a, a load management program for people involved in sport and it's a whole day thing. So you're going to get the abridged version in 15 slides. Um, and I also know that this is an area that has been worked on uh, in track and field. Uh, certainly Nick Drew from the Australian Institute of Sport has spent a lot of time um, in this area and he's consulted with us. So I apologise if I go real fast. An injury can only occur when load exceeds tissue threshold. Right, that's all you need to know. If the load is greater than tissue threshold, you'll get injured. If you're driving a car and you get T-boned, the force, the load of the T-boning car into your femur exceeds the tissue threshold of the femur and you will break your bone. When you've done 20 sprints at near maximum velocity and you ask someone to do the 21st sprint, the load of the 21st sprint has exceeded the tissue threshold of a very fatigued hamstring muscle, they'll do a hand if it's succeeded, right? When load is greater than tissue threshold, and it's individually based. The same load for two people is not the same load, right? The same load for two people is not the same load because one person can have a higher tissue threshold and another has a lower tissue threshold. So if you give everyone eight by 200s, some of them may break down and some will stand up because their tissue thresholds are different. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the risk factors. Fixed, can't change it. Age, previous injury history. Modifiable, the ones you guys dabble with. Flexibility, strength, and all that. This is the one. This is the one we need to get our head around. Because what happens, we have two athletes. This is their tissue threshold, red. And this is this another one, grey. This is the loads we give them each week. This guy in grey, he's had this load here in week three and handled it beautifully. When we give him the same load in week five, something's happened to his tissue threshold and this load now exceeds the tissue threshold and now he's at risk of an injury. And let's say he got injured. And everyone goes, oh, he did this two weeks ago. Yeah, he did, but his tissue threshold has changed. Not his load, not the load, the tissue threshold has changed. And it's variable. It changes all the time. So what are some of the factors that cause change? Lack of sleep. They're sore. They've got the flu coming off the flu. They've just been on a camp. They've traveled. They've moved house all weekend. Or they've done gardening all weekend. Or some of our players did they water ski all weekend. We broke about four of them down. Unusual activity. And there are a few bizarre, unusual activities in the AFL. We, we send them out uh, and they go to uh, a sponsors meeting and it goes five hours, seven till midnight, and they're standing the whole time. We've got training the following day. Um, stress and fatigue. fatigue. So those things change that. So that's why we monitor them. That's why you need a relationship with them so you can go, hey, you go. How's the dog? Uh, escaped. I've spent the whole weekend worrying about it. I've run after it, I'm stressed, and now I'm tired. Right? So you may have to take that into account. How do we prevent injury? Well, there's three global things. This is from the World Health Organization. This is the, the medical, they have from a health viewpoint, it's not sport. We provide universal protection <coughs> to cover off everything. So a universal example in AFL of injury protection is a mouth guard. Everyone wears a mouth guard. No matter who you are, no matter what your teeth are, you wear a mouth guard and we're universally trying to prevent dental injuries. Right? That's universal. Um, inoculation against disease is a universal health prevention. So there are some things that you would need to do for every one of your athletes. Everyone, regardless of who they are, universally. Then there's selective, particular groups of athletes. The veteran, the first year, um, the extremely tall, whatever. You select those groups and you'll have something different for them. So a veteran athlete may do three quarters of the load because they're veteran. Age is a risk factor. 
right? And then there's the indicator group. That's the group that's had already four hamstring strains. So you need to do something for that group. Does that make sense? So this is what I'm going to do for everyone. This is what I'm going to do for selected groups. And this is what I'm going to do for selected individuals. So that's the way you go about it. Then there's the common injuries, which is this way. So for hamstring strains, for hamstring strains, there's a primary prevention factor. What am I going to do for hamstring strains if that's common in my sport? So it might be increased sit now, eccentric load. It might be make sure strength is um, symmetrical. It might be I'm going to do drop catches uh, or I'm going to keep up the velocity of running. Secondary is when they start to get sore or my hamstrings are a bit tight. What's your risk management for when they're a bit tight? And then they've got the hamstring. How am I going to stop it from being a four-weeker when it's a two-weeker? So there's, this is what I'm going to do to prevent all injuries. This is what I'm going to do to prevent specific injuries. And you need to think through it. How can you think through it when you spend all your time at the event level and you don't think about the vision? You've got to find time for the big picture. Otherwise, you just go event, 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 hammy, 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 pat the behaviour, and you haven't got system and structure in place. That's why levels of perspective are important. I've spoken about that. Um, I've spoken about that. This is a really good one. This is uh, from volleyball at the AIS. Um, they did all their stuff to prevent uh, patellar tendonitis. Then if it got sore, they then went into their secondary prevention, which is decrease the load of jumping. We still want you to train, but you know, only going to do 60%. And then if it was got to this phase where it was really sore, then they put in place the next thing. You know what? After, I think it was two years, they never had one incidence of patellar tendonitis. They got to this phase, and these two, this primary and secondary prevention was really good. That's a great thing. They never lost a player through the most common injury in volleyball. Load. Um, Look, I'm going to put up some stuff about acute load, chronic load uh, that is well researched. There's a lot of evidence about it, but there's a lot of debate about it. Now in research, there is a great deal of thinking that taking this through a copper, acute load, chronic load, trained stress balance, um, it, it may not be the ant's pants. But for me, it gives me some objectivity as a system until someone tells me something different I'm really comfortable with. And I don't care what other people say because it fits what I want to do, and it's part of my vision, and when I have more evidence, I'll change my mental model about it, right? So, daily load is what you do. We sometimes use how hard is training, and then obviously this is um, a very common thing, session load. So it was seven and a half out of 10, it was that hard, we did it for 90 minutes and that. Acute load is this is how far we ran this week, uh, this day, this day, this day, this day, this day, we did a week's worth of running, our acute load, what we did in seven days, 32.2K. You might go number of throws, number of jumps, distance sprinted above 28 kilometres an hour, whatever your measurement is as a, an intelligent coach, you will have a measurement of load, I'm sure. Whatever that is, tonnage that you might lift, whatever. Then, that's acute load. What I've done in a week, we call this fatigue. Fitness is how much have I been able to do over the last four weeks. So, here's this week, that was this week, the week before I did that, the week before I did that, the week before I did that, I add all of that up, I divide it by four, and that's my average chronic load over the last four weeks. And training stress balance is that over that, that over that, and we get 105 to 105%. Makes sense, and I'm sure some of you have dabbled in that. It's common now. And do you do that for each player? Is that part yep. of it? Yep. Yep. Team, and then each player. Yep. Well, we have a luxury of GPS units. Every player has to wear a GPS unit every training session, so we have all that data. Yep, good question. <laughs> yep. On <laughs> right outside. This is from the AIS. All the data they've collected, training stress balance. So remember this figure here, 105%. What I did in one week over what I've done in four weeks, 105% here has the lowest rate of injury. And as you do more in one week, 
compared to what we've done in the last four weeks of risk of injury escalates. So when you have a massive spike in low, you are putting your players at risk if they haven't done a lot of work, players, athletes, in the previous month. I'm going to finish with just a couple of graphs. So this is how we graph our load, and if you can do the same, it gives you some objectivity in how you're going. And it's your skill is what am I measuring? So this is one of the problems we have. We have what we call a ceiling of safety and a floor of protection. So when we exceed the ceiling of safety, we exceed tissue threshold and we're at risk. If we do too much below the floor, we don't give enough protection because we can't build the chronic load because we've got a weight that's too low. So the chronic load drops over the four weeks. So we need to keep our workload in here. This is too low, this is too high. Right, so we need some balance. This could be leaders weekend and they're all gone to the Gold Coast. You go to your car, oh you've missed a week when they come back, hit them up. Try and get our loads in between here. This is from Netball, uh, Australian Netball. This is the ceiling of safety. This is the risk of injury. As soon as 6,000 units is breached, look how rapid the rate of injury increases. So they've got a very clear ceiling of safety in Netball. The next thing you need to know is an injury can occur in a latency period. And we think the evidence says you're at risk of this spike for four weeks. So the injury doesn't occur in the week of the damage. The injury can occur in any time after that. So a mistake has to be carefully managed. If you know you've made a mistake, you've got to be very careful what happens after. So this injury here, the red bars, occurred because of this spike. This is called the boom bust, the boom bust cycle, which means one injury you get over and it leads to another injury. So, train load, too low, below the floor, too high, too much of a spike, injured, rehab, still in rehab, comes back, too much of a spike, injury again, boom bust. Right, we haven't allowed for the load in that case. So this is a much better, too low, selling your safety, Injury occurs in the latency period, gradual, 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 gradual return. Gradual. It's complicated. If this happens to be the nationals, take the risk. Of course you do. You might do. One last little thing. Ah, oh, this is a cracker. So, this is how long it takes to return to the load that you were once at, what we call a normal load. Right. It's from the ALS. So, if you have um, a f four weeks of doing nothing, it takes five weeks, nearly six weeks, to get back to where you were when you started doing nothing. So it needs to be graduated for six weeks. So if you give them a month off and you do nothing, they do nothing. It takes six weeks, don't just come back and train them. What about if you give them two months off and do nothing? It takes eight weeks to get back. So every time you give athletes a rest, try and give them some load, some load. So they're not just sitting at the beach in Bali for four weeks doing nothing. Because we want to get them back training quickly. Eight weeks off, doing 80% of the load only takes four weeks to get them back up to the load. So doing something in their break is really important to minimise injury risk. Um, this just shows that this is Christmas, we don't give our boys anything. This is the load that the coach wants to do after Christmas. Red is a real danger period. When we don't do anything, they go straight into the red five times the injury risk. If we can give them two weeks, of doing something, look how now this is the same load, but nowhere near as dangerous. The same load because we've been able to keep them doing something without trying to go through the whole graph. 535, thank you. I need to thank these guys, they do all uh, the data for me. I got, uh, I got thousands of resources done by new loads. Um, this guy does the slides, so I'm really lucky. Um, I've got three people that help me.